Kendall, uh, good morning. Um, defensively, what do you think you bring to the starting lineup? And did you guys do anything different defensively with you starting as opposed to coming off the bench? Uh, no, just starting the game defensively, having that defensive mindset just to start the game, I think it really sets the edge for our team just to continue to play. Thomas, follow-up? Okay. Uh, and you had started, what, 15 games, I think, for UTA last year. So any kind of adjustment for you, like mentally getting ready for the game, or how did you handle that? Uh, I don't really let the starting get to me, just – it's about who finishes the game, who does coach trust the most, really. That's what matters to me. Eric Henry, please. Hey, Kendall. When we spoke in October, you talked about one of the things you want to work on being your defensive communication. Just wondering, A, how you feel you've grown as a defender from October to now? And second part of that question, was there ever a moment when it just clicked for you this season and was like, all right, you know, I, I can really make my name, my calling card on defense this year for this team? Uh, I kind of figured that would be my role this year, and Coach RT challenged me to be a defender and communicate, so I think I just challenged myself as well to be better. And just quick follow-up, you know, how do you feel you've grown most defensively from maybe when you first got to campus to now? Uh, I say tremendously. My talking has got so much better. Jeff Jones, please. Hey, Kendall, um, I'm wondering – what gives you the most joy on the court? Like, aside from winning, what do you enjoy most on the court? Uh, seeing my teammates happy, you know, they bring me joy, you know, seeing them get buckets, play defense. I think that brings me the most joy. Yeah. Roger Wallace, please. Hey, Kendall, you heard, you heard the stat from, from Scott. You're in the middle of it. What What is this grind uh, like night in and night out, knowing what you're up against uh, when you guys take the floor? I mean, man, it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, the getting us ready for the NCAA tournament, honestly, that's how I see it. And then your athleticism, I mean, clearly the, the steal and the dunk, a highlight and all that. But I, I think about that play where you made on the baseline and you found a way to throw in the corner to Brock. Uh, he hit the three. How does your athleticism uh, help your game? Uh, I think it helps it a lot, you know, getting downhill, not only to score for me, but to look out pass for my teammates on the defense collapse. Travis, go ahead, please, sir. Kendall, I think I saw where your sister was at the game on Saturday. Can you give us a little, like, you know, background on her role as far as basketball in your life and maybe kind of, you know, maybe some battles you all have had over the years playing? Uh, yeah, she's kind of like a mentor to me, you know. Like, after the game, she told me some advice, you know, try to get down here with my left hand, uh, get in the gym, work on my ball handling a little bit. And she's just always there for me and constructive criticism always. And I've always looked up there. Did y'all play a lot against each other growing up? Were there were there ever like, hey, she she's better than me? Or did you catch up to her? I would never say the better than me part. You know, I'm a I'm a competitor, but you know, we we would always play. Jeff Jones, follow up. Yeah, Kendall, I know that RT has told us over the season he likes to uh, give you guys comparisons to NBA players or to college stars of the past. Has he compared you to anyone? And if so, what does that do for you? Um, I've kind of got the the Avery Bradley comparison, the the defense, you know, to be the ball hawk, you know, and that really uh, boosts my confidence. You know, I went and watched some Avery Avery Bradley highlights at Texas, honestly. So I just trying to mimic his game a little bit. Dennis, go ahead, please, sir. Kimball, where where does your motor, your want to, your hunger, where? Where does that come from? Can you take yourself back to when it, it got instilled in you? Uh, it's just always having a chip on my shoulder. You know, I wasn't really highly recruited out of high school. So just being able to play at this level, you know, you always got to have a chip on your shoulder. Do, do you, I know it's cliche a lot of times when people always think they're outworking the other guy, but for you, it seems like you're outworking the other guy. Like how important is that piece to your game? Uh, it's very important. You know, I just try to outwork myself, honestly, you know, always push myself to the next level. Thanks. Never get too comfortable. Thomas Jones, go ahead, please. A uh, quick, quick follow up with, with your sister. Like you mentioned, she's telling you, Hey, go to your left when you can. What's, what's probably some of the best basketball advice you've gotten from her? Man, off the top of my head, uh, 
I don't know. I just say be you, you know. Just do it, go out there and do what you do is honestly the best advice. Good afternoon, RT. Uh, just want to ask, what's one area that you've seen this team grow the most from the beginning of the season to now? And follow up on that, what's one area that you'd like to see them grow between now and the end of the year? Well, I think defensively, you know, I think uh, I think we've we've grown over the course of the season uh, from what we started at the very beginning to when we got to mid year. Um, I think you know where we are right now. I think we're playing with more of an urgency. Uh, we're playing like a you know a scrappy team, a team that uh, you know tries to play extremely hard on that end of the floor, and understanding that. Uh, that in order to win games in the Big 12, you got to be a really good defensive team and you got to work really hard at it, finishing possessions, trying to put consecutive stops together. Um, you know, so I not, I do think, again, we're, we're continuing to get better with that. Our rim protection is coming right now uh, and, and getting better over the course of this season as well. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of rim protection early in the year and we're getting we're getting uh, getting better in that, that area. I think our guards are doing a better job of standing in front of the basketball um o over the course of the season right now from a defense standpoint so to me that's been the biggest area that uh that I think we've grown um you know anytime you can win 50 50 game when you're the first to the floor gives yourself a chance to win in this league uh as well I'd like to also uh congratulate our women's uh basketball team on the week they just had I mean they played two top teams in the country beat one on their home court and uh, had a really big win here yesterday uh, against K State. Vic's done a done an outstanding job this year, and uh, they uh, they they have a great season uh, going for them right now. Look for them to go really far in March. Terry Middleton, please. Coach Terry, good afternoon. Thanks for spending time with us. So I have a question on Max Amos. He consistent he's always like you said before he's all you can count on him putting up his numbers he's about to overtake the great oscar robinson in the in the all-time scoring as consistent as he is he has to have a daily routine that allows him to be consistent in the games what does he do day in and day out that makes him as consistent as he is well, I think at some point we're going to start putting great in front of his name, right, as a, as a collegiate basketball player. You know, anytime you're able to to do what he's doing right now and, and, and had the career that he's had to this point right now, um, you know, you have to look at him as one of the special guys to ever play college basketball. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think, again, guys are always at their best when they when they have routines. He's a, he's a big-time routine guy in terms of, uh, you know, he's a guy that's going to come in and be a student of the game. He's going to come in and watch tape. Uh, with the coaches every day. Uh, he's going to come in and put the work in with his ball handling every day, along with his shooting. Um, he's gotten to a point where he's worked on his defense a little bit as well. Uh, and things, but he just, uh, he, he works on his craft. You know, I always tell guys all the time, you know, you reap what you sow uh, in life, you know, and what you put into it, what you're going to get out of the game. And uh, he's been one of those guys over the course of his career that's always had a great routine. You know, he, you know, we practice earlier this morning here. He'll go to class. He'll come back this afternoon. And he'll watch tape. And uh, he'll get back in the gym and get some shots up. Thank you. Thomas Jones, please. R RT, you know, starting Kendall, did that change your defensive strategy at all? It seemed like y'all were ball pressure a little bit more and a little bit earlier up top. And then I have a follow-up on, on Kendall. Yeah, Thomas, I think um, you know, I don't know if it necessarily changed our strategy. I mean, we've tried to tried to be a uh a hard-nosed defensive team all year and try to get off get off to a great start, especially on that end of the floor, uh every night. You know, I think in games you have to make adjustments. And uh I know early in that game they were really hurting us with points in the paint and uh in particular in pick and roll, points in the paint. And uh so we had to make a decision that you know, either we were going to continue to be the victim or, or we were going to come out and start trying to be a little bit more aggressive. And I think we decided to be a little bit more aggressive. And, and his sister, she's an elite level basketball player. Does he ever talk about her and any lessons he learned from her? You know, not directly to myself. I know throughout the recruiting process, we talked about it and busy with him and his mom, both about her opportunities, where she was, you know, where she was and the time that she got a chance to develop at A&M. 
uh, and everything. And, you know, we tried to present the same type of opportunity for, for Kendall here at Texas, you know, where he's going to have a chance to come in and uh, continue to develop, you know, at a higher level. You know, he was at UTA the year before, and he was white freshman of the year, but he was going to be stepping up a level and, you know, just hopefully trusting us that we were going to continue to try to develop him both offensively and defensively. Jeff Jones, please. Uh, RT, you've told us over the season uh, how often you put together videos of, of comparisons to your current players, to NBA guys or former college players. Why is that Im important to do? What's the philosophy behind that? Well, I think, you know, obviously those guys watch a lot of NBA, you know, what they have an aspiration uh, to do uh, in the future is to try to play at that level as well. So, you know, if you're able to come up with a really good NBA comp for a guy, currently that he can watch closely and try to tr see if he can emulate and see if he can be that type of guy. I think that gives him something to shoot for. We also have a number of different NBA, former NBA players at Texas, you know, that we can also, um, you know, refer back to guys and say, Hey man, you know what, when we coach this guy here at Texas and uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have been here and we had a lot of good pros uh, when I was here, you know, and, one in particular that I've tried to really try to instill in him was Avery Bradley. You know, AB, we recruited AB out of Seattle. He came in as number one recruit in the country. Uh, and his calling card was defense, you know, and he made himself an elite level player as an AAU prospect on, with his defense. You know, we knew his offense was going to be ahead of him in the future. And we're going to continue to work on him, work with him offensively to continue to get better. But, you know, AB was one of the quickest guys we ever coached on the ball quickest guy to make a recovery and he took a lot of pride in his defense and uh I don't know I think AB played 10 years 11 years in the NBA won a world championship with the Lakers and uh was a pretty good player for us for one year at Texas you know and stuff so you know they could see a guy that had been in that same jersey and doing some of the same things that we're asking him to do AB did for us as well at a high level follow up Jeff uh, yes, please. So you said Kendall's comp is A.B. I think you told us uh, Zarek's comp was Kenneth Fareed. Um, who who are some of the other comps on the team? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I, I think what I really try to work hard with Tyrese and uh, and Max, those guys are going to be gonna be fine from an offensive standpoint. Defensively, moving forward in the future, you know, we've shown guys like Fred, Fred Van Fleet, a guy that sits down and guards hard. Alvarez played at Georgia Tech. A guard that's pretty good that, you know, calling card was on defense. Talked a lot about Carter that played at West Virginia, you know. And we showed him also um, the kid that played at West Virginia that's playing with the Knicks right now as well. Um, yeah, as uh, McBride. Yeah, McBride, he's about 6'1", 6 6'2". 6 so those have been guys that we've made edits of and showed those guys, some next-level guys, um, you know, and guys that have played here. We have Doge Bell Bay on our staff, so that's working with us now a little bit. And stuff so can't can't discount those those are one of the best on ball defenders we ever had at Texas. Dennis, go ahead, please, sir. Coach, you talked about how Kendall's defense, you know, jumped off the page when you were recruiting him. Did, could you sense his heart and his motor through that process? Did it jump out at you? Oh, Beard and I saw him playing a state championship game. Uh, we lost that in the first round of the Big Twelve tournament, so we were we were able to get a front row seat watching him as a youngster in high school. And uh, just the tenacity that he played with in high school was a guy that we were very intrigued with, uh, but we weren't in a position to be able to take young guys at that time uh, in our program. But we always had it in the Rolodex back there. You say Rolodex, you start dating yourself. No one even knows what a Rolodex is anymore, right? But uh, but we always put it back in that Rolodex. We're like, man, we know that kid. We've seen it with our own eyes. And our eyes never lie. I don't have my, my, my other two with me today. I just have my... My my two right here. I usually have four, but but usually when I'm watching games, I have all four of them. And they, you know, I I can see exactly what that kid brought to the table. And we just loved how hard he played and how 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 much of a competitor he was. And when we talked to his high school coach, I mean, it was icing on the cake in terms of his work ethic and what he did every day. And it was his identity. And uh, you knew he had a chance to be a really good player. No doubt. And a follow up when we're talking about toughness on a team toughness standpoint. How hard is it in the Big 12 grind to continue to like develop that piece? Because I know it's it's got to be a balancing act to to get their legs back, you know, to get to go to war the next day. How tough is that balancing act? 
Well, I think, again, we got a great training staff that does a great job. Warren does a great job with recovery. Corey does a great job with recovery uh, in terms of trying to get our guys on a quick turnaround uh, against another really quality opponent. Um, you know, it's really it's really important that you manage guys the right way. I mean, we play Saturday afternoon. We bust back. It's a better bust right back with the win than a loss. Uh, but, but we bust back, and, you know, your recovery starts that night. You know, you got to start doing – doing things in terms of hydrating, taking care of your body, getting rest. And uh, it's not a time of the year where you got to, you know, move around. You need to be sitting down and getting your rest. You got a quick turnaround. We come back Sunday and it's treatment day and, you know, more recovery work uh, with one hands on. Uh, and then really, to be honest with you, it's more of a cerebral day. You know, we, uh, we get a chance to introduce our opponent. We walk through things we need to walk through. And, and we really manage that day in terms of, you know, not really uh, doing much with our guys. Then we come back today and we got to get going again a little bit to get ready for for a really well-coached, um, high-level team in Iowa State. Cedric, please. Yeah, RT, um, yeah, I, I've got a Rolodex in. I still use dial-up. Um, you know, you um, – you guys are the only team in the Big 12 to win three road games, and that's kind of kept you guys afloat. Um, uh, how, how do you break that those struggles at the house, even though we know that Houston game could have gone either way? Well, one, we've had great crowds here. We've had, you know, our students have come in and done an incredible job since the semester started. Uh, Longhorn Nation's come in and given us a great home court. Um, you know, we've got to obviously do our part in terms of coming in and competing at a very high level put ourselves in position to try to win these, these uh, you know, highly competitive games in the Big 12. I think uh, the thing I've tried to echo to our guys is that, uh, you know, in order to be consistent in life, you know, you you got to do, you know, what you do every day, you know, and you, you have to be really big into your routine and uh, more importantly, uh, really hone in on the details. You got to be sharp in everything we do. We got to win every film session. We got to try to win every practice we have, every walkthrough we have, you know, and uh, in terms of our preparation for these games. But again, I always tell our guys, you know, there's never any pressure to try to win games in front of you, whether you're on the whole at home or on the road. Trust your preparation, the work you put in already, and then you got to go play. You got to go play, and you know, everybody wants to win. You know, we're going to want to win tomorrow night. Iowa State's going to want to win tomorrow night. You know, who's going to put their will on who in terms of, you know, doing the the uncomfortable things it's going to take to get it done? Mike Harge. What up, RT? Um, quick question for you, my man. So the, Dylan, after the game, was talking about rebounding and how, you know, if you win the rebounding battle, most of the time you're going to win those games. And when you don't, you're going to end up losing it. You, you won the rebounding battle comfortably this past week. And – uh one of the things that I wanted to talk about, you talked about the 50-50 balls and how you got to attack. What was something that you ended up talking to the guys about, or was it just that obvious for them that they weren't winning against Houston and some of the other teams that they played against? Well, you know, Mike, as we embarked on the Big 12, we knew that, uh, and we started really trying to prepare our guys for the physicality of the league, you know, and uh, every team in our league puts tremendous pressure on you to uh, keep them off the glass. Really, really good crashing teams in our league where they get second chance opportunities. And, uh, you know, a lot of those teams are not just only elite at, at crashing, they're elite at converting second chance points, you know. And, uh, um, you know, but some part of the Big 12 play it was an Achilles for us, you know. Uh, we'd have a really good defensive possession and then we don't finish it with a really good block out and give them a, give the opponent a second chance point that they really weren't deserving of and kind of break that breaks your back over the, over the course of games when that occurs. But uh, I think we've done a better job of really trying to clean that up in terms of physical blockouts. This game here is going to be another one of those elite level offensive rebounding teams that, you know, you're going to have to rebound at all five spots. They've got really good guards that rebound down uh, offensively. Uh, so all five guys got to be looking to hit somebody when the shot goes up because this is a, this is a really elite level team. But, but again, anytime you can eliminate or cut down on second chance opportunities, I think it gives you, your, your team a chance, uh, to, uh, to be successful in big 12 play. 
have five more left in the queue. If you guys could hold to one question each, so we can roll them through. Joe Cook, please. Just kind of in general, what does Iowa State bring? I know you mentioned them, and then what's it like just preparing for a team once instead of having to prepare for them twice? Does that change anything for y'all? Well, again, you know, Iowa State, one of the best teams in the country. I mean, you know, top top 15 team in the country. Uh, TJ's done a great job with this group this year. Uh, he's brought in some really good transfer guys that have been impacts for him this year. He's had some continuity with some guys from last year's team. Um, you know, they're one of the best teams in the country at turning you over, number one in the country, you know, in terms of forcing 17, 18 turnovers a game uh, in, in conference play um, and, and, and converting. They're playing faster this year because of that. Uh, they do a great job crashing the glass. They're one of the elite teams that get into the foul line, really put pressure on the basket in terms of, you know, really, you know, challenging you to play without fouling. Uh, and put them there at the line. So, you know, we're going to be really strong with the ball. They uh, they, they they force you into to really bad turn. They're aggressive defensively, you know, uh, and play really in the hard nose defense. They play really hard. They play a lot like we try to play in terms of being being a scrappy, hard-playing team. And uh, he, he's got his team to do that at a very high level. Kirk, go ahead. Uh, Rodney, you mentioned uh, those ball bays on your staff. Uh, I was Dope. curious how that came about and what's his role and uh, are you going to start recruiting Turkey more? Recruiting Turkey. Well, you know what? Doge one of those guys that had come back this – he came back this summer and uh, we're still trying to decide whether or not he was going to retire or play one more season. And uh, – but but he also, you know, visit with – you know, possibly embarking on, on a coaching career or still staying attached to the game in some capacity. And uh, – the thing I said to him, I said, you know, go back home, decide what you want to do. And if you decide you want to come back, we love to start, you know, trying to help you, you know, get started with your career in some capacity, you know, and whether that be in college, professionally, where you're, you know, you're working as a scout, you know, you just let me know what you want to try to do. And we'll be more than willing to try to help you get your career started, man. Cause those are one of my all time, all time favorites to coach. You know, a lot of times coaches don't want to say we have favorites, but those bad bay one of those kind of guys that, you know, what you want in the foxhole with you. You know, he's one of the toughest guys I've ever had a chance to coach. But, uh, you know, I told him to come back, you know, be around our program. And, and he, he, he took that to heat. He, uh, he decided to to retire. And he's like, you know, what, Coach, I just want to come back and be around in some capacity, see if I can help the young guys, mentor the young guys, uh, and, and be around. And, uh, and so we've been able to work through that a little bit. I mean, he's not a full-time guy on our staff, but – He's a guy that at, at, in a support role uh, that really, you know, mentors our guys and uh, uh, does a good job communicating with them. Will we recruit Turkey? You know, we'd love to be able to recruit internationally. I mean, we like to think that our, our brand can go worldwide, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get a really good one in him uh, to come here. So, you know, maybe he would entice some other guys who want to come over and, and be a part of what we're doing. Roger Wallace, please. RT, they're, they're shot makers, and then they're tough shot makers. Uh, when Max does what he does late in games, I mean, you, you look like you kind of had to hold back your emotions just a little bit on a couple of those. Uh, what is it about him that makes him willing and able to to hit those difficult shots? I mean, again, Max going to go down as one of the special guys that ever played college basketball, you know, and uh, a big-time player on the court, you know, an even better kid off the court, you know, and the game within the game, you know what I mean? I mean, there's always different times and, Junctures of the game where you know we would you know say the same thing to Marcus Carr. Hey, it's your time right now, man. You know and stuff. You know and you know he's always going to have a bullseye on him. Max has never not had a bullseye. So you know guys are always game planning for him. And you know at TCU they always you know try to put more length on him. They they put PV their best you know perimeter defender on him as well. And uh, we said, hey, it's your time. I'm gonna get you a couple of looks throughout the course of the game. And then there are going to be some opportunities where you got to pick and choose your your moments where you get a chance to go and get something done as well. It's your time, you know. And uh, he's done that throughout the course of the season. But you talk about a guy that uh, just wants to win. He's going to do whatever it takes to win. If that's making a great pass, hitting an open teammate, he's going to do that. That calls for him to step up and make a big shot or put himself in a position to take a big shot. He's got no problem doing that as well. He's done it his whole career. And uh, – you know, that was on full display on Saturday. Two last ones. Terry Middleton, please. 
Coach, so can you take us through tag teaming off of Roger's question? Can you take us through what were you thinking? I mean, it's a chess match until the end. And then Max hits those two threes. And then you go ballistic on the side. Can you take us through, if you remember, just what you were going through? Because that probably put the game out of reach and, and secured the game. And you just got fired up. And I think the camera panned out and they enjoyed seeing the shot as much as your animation. What, what, can you remember what went through your mind? You got them or what was happening? <laughs> it was fun to watch. Well, I think again, the, the times where you, uh, you know, it's really hard sometimes for him just to get a clean look, you know? Um, and I, and I think there were times in that game in particular where we're like, man, we got to run something, to get him going. We got to get him. We got to run something in a play or two, to give him an opportunity to get a good clean look. And we did that. You know, he scored one time where he, he didn't get the shot, but he got downhill. The next time he, he got a he got a really about as good a look as he's gonna get, and he didn't make the shot. But we wanted to get him going and get it, get him more aggressive. And I even said to him in the in the huddle, uh, and even you know, during the course of the game, I'm like, hey, it's your time right now. It is your time. And so I say, step up. You know, you're open, you know, be ready to shoot the basketball, man. It's 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 max time. Let's go. And uh he uh he, he did that, you know, and stuff. And uh, I think uh I think over the course of the game, you know, we kind of have some words going back and forth at times. <laughs> Cause sometimes he thinks he's being aggressive and he's not being aggressive. And I'm like, I want you to be aggressive, super aggressive right now. <laughs> and everything, but uh but no, I'm really happy for him when he does well. I'm happy for him for all of my guys when they do well. Uh, but but he just made a couple really big shots, and uh, I was just excited about the moment. Last one to Chip. RT, it seems like when you have uh, Hunter and Weaver on the floor together, you can really, you know, apply some some ball pressure, extend your your perimeter defense can you just talk about that and how that's evolved yeah for sure i'll tell you what chip we uh the pressure we had on saturday and i said this to our guys looked like our, a lot like our close scrimmage and i thought we were going to be able to sustain that for a better part of the season we played colorado early in the year and they've got a pac-12 all for a first team all all league guard that's uh really good in simpson and uh, they had another guard that was a starter for them as well. And both of those guards were really good guards, guards we were going to see all year long. And, you know, we did an incredible job with our ball pressure in that game to a point to where those guys didn't even want to dribble the ball up the floor anymore. They just started giving the ball to Cody Williams to bring the ball up. And, uh, and I was like, man, we're going to have some kind of ball pressure all year if we're able to sustain that and be able to do that. But, but last Saturday looked a lot like we did at the start of the year in terms of pressure up the floor and, one-on-one -on -one defense up the floor and uh, Tyrese and those guys giving giving other guards, opposing guards, a lot of problems, just kind of getting into their offense. You know, TCU had a hard time getting into their offense on Saturday because of our ball pressure. But, you know, over the course of the season, over the course of a game, it's easier said than done. You don't want to wear these guys out a little bit too and things, you know. Um, we have some depth. Uh but but we want to be able to have some of our frontline guys be able to play and have their legs when it's time for them to make shots and make plays as well at the end of the game. That's what we got time for. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate hopping on early. <clears throat> One quick thing on Max. Uh, I don't want to get lost in the shuffle. <clears throat> uh, I know people are excited about his 13 straight points in the game. Going back to the start of that run, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind taking a look at his defensive strip that he had on Emmanuel Miller, on that layup uh, and then save and bounce to Kendall Weaver. That kind of started things before his three-point play on there. So if you guys don't mind uh, making sure that doesn't get lost in the shuffle, appreciate it. <clears throat> RT, thank you. Okay, thank you, guys.